started and then I try and work out when that's done which of the next ones we're going to choose. We'll see how it flows, yeah? So if we just concentrate on this upper piece, then we'll get going real quick, hopefully. We've got six ish suggestions, and I think the only way to deal with this is to have those. Okay. Let's, you know, any other suggestions, let us know. But I think if we go for those six and kind of hands up if you're really passionate about it, then we'll just try and take it from there. Is that okay? Yeah? yeah. Right. No. So, the first one, uh, from Bev, the organisation isn't ready for that. Really? How do you know? What could you do to make it ready? The second one from Robert is, in the age of social networking, are professional organisations needed? The third one, which was from Sarah and Addy, um, how to engage managers in exploring new ways of developing their staff? Uh, line managers still don't see development as part of their role. Go back to workplace after the magic wand of L&D, I guess. Um, David, uh, why is learning anathema to CEOs and what can we do to change this? Uh, Sam B, how might we engage the vast majority of our industry in the debates that matter to the future of learning and work when they aren't on Twitter or debates like this? Um, and Alison's <laughs> <Alice, laughs> one is, is the ultimate aim of L&D to make itself redundant, i.e. equip colleagues to become expert learners? Love diversity. I've read it through quite quickly. Maybe something that attracted your attention. If I can just read through those six one by one and try and get a <coughs> show of hands, is that okay? Um, I think I kind of need you not to vote more than once. <laughs> <laughs> is that okay too? 